G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Recently, the Mirage 2000C was released to the game in the form of Update Drone Age, and uh, I thought we might give it a look. Normally, for those of you that know the French tree quite well, it's, let's just say, full of disappointments. There is a very small amount of planes that are, you know, actually good, um, and most of those tend to get superseded pretty quickly by other things. Um, a classic example here is the F-100D, uh, and things like the Mirage 3C uh, get, you know, superseded by other planes and they don't get replaced in time. The uh, Mirage F1C was added somewhat recently uh, and that was quite a disappointment to be honest because that plane, whilst being a good upgrade, still lacked a couple of crucial things that just made it a little bit subpar compared to the other planes. And now, enter the Mirage 2000. Mirage 2000 is quite a modern jet, I think it was 1985 or 1988, basically late 80s, early 90s, and I think this thing was only retired very recently. The Mirage 2000 is perhaps one of the more advanced jets in the game, but does it stand up to the likes of the F-14? And at the moment, I think what we should do is use the F-14 as the hallmark of what is an ideal top tier plane. And in this case, we basically come in with half the missiles, uh, a little bit less performance, but I tell you what, this plane has a real knack for being a dogfighter type aircraft. It has a top speed of 1,365 kilometers an hour, that's the do not exceed speed, and uh, you will be sorry if you do rip. You also have a fair amount of compression around these high speeds, so dogfighting around these high speeds is probably not going to be your best bet, what I tend to do is skirt around the battlefield, sort of start to use up my missiles, and then make my way into some dogfights. I won't take myself so slowly, but I will get to a point where I can single out an opponent and engage in a one versus one, because this plane seems to have an absolute knack for one versus ones. I don't really know any other plane, like the F-14 is not really the plane for it. Uh, the Phantom, certainly again, not the plane for it. The MiG-21 BIS tends to be a, a good plane for dogfighting, but I find that it does have a bit of a lack of energy at this stage of the of the meta, if you will. So, equipped we have two Matra Magics, and these are the Magic 2s, which are all aspect to a certain distance. These are phenomenal missiles, so you, whilst you don't have four of them, you have half you basically get higher quality, and honestly, that's not too bad. It does give you a few more options, uh, and it does mean that you can engage from not quite front-on aspect, uh, but certainly a lot higher than you would normally consider an enemy to be a threat at. And of course, because you don't need the radar lock, uh, they basically have to use their Mark 1 eyeball to have a look and see that the missile is on its way. Now, the other is the Matra Magic, no, Matra 530 Super... D. The Fs are complete rubbish. Don't use the Fs, they're IR guided. The Ds are where it's at. Now I'm going to go for a couple of cheeky missiles here and you can see what I mean by that higher aspect ratio. I'm kind of out of sight, out of mind for the F-14, but unfortunately for him, I managed to come in and get him with the Matra Magics. So we've got the 530Ds loaded up and of course, Pulse Doppler Radar is looking for something that stands out among the ground clutter. And uh, if you're turning and you're traveling somewhat slow, the Pulse Doppler radar doesn't really pick it up. And so I'm not able to get a lock on the F5C. I can see an F4E there. I'm gonna turn off my afterburner and smash out a few flares. The F4E goes down to the MiG-27, and that leaves me with a couple of F5s to deal with. I find that this plane can very easily deal with the F5s. I feel like I haven't had a good dogfight with an F5 where he's really put me in a challenge. Uh, but I would assume that if you're using your full flaps and your afterburner controls and things like that, you could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this plane quite well. Now, we have two more F5s here, and I'm going to try and get one of them here with the uh, Matra Super 530D here. We're going to go at a lock at about maybe four kilometers. Four is about right, because if you go too early, you give your opponent plenty of time to dodge, and if you go too late, you don't give the missile enough time to make its mark. I've managed to get one, which is kill number four, and the F5 is now engaging the MiG-27 in a full commit head-on, which is exactly what you do. Uh, and as you can see, it's gone perfectly well for the MiG-27. 
So we're in a dogfight here with the F5, and it seems like I have quite the energy advantage. I'm going to try and use the cheeky missile, but he's kind of notching me, and it just doesn't quite work as well in this situation. So we're going to go in for the dogfight, and I'm basically turning and burning all of my energy to try and sit on the bum of this F5C. I've got those wing slats and they're deploying as uh, sort of an automatic thing and the F5C is slowly starting to lose some ground here. I have got my afterburner switched off and I'm just trying to follow the F5 as closely as possible, getting some speed there on the down and then I uh, should really be switching it up on the op, uh, off on the up but uh, it doesn't really matter. The F5 has blown in front of my guns and that leaves me with a quick and cheeky ace. Now, I have played a few games in this plane and most of your games will not pan out like this. You'll tend to get maybe one or two kills and of course being on the defensive means that you may get taken out of the match early. This type of plane is not suited to defensive flying. It's not a missile bus, it is a lot more of a dogfighter and a lot more of a plane that you sort of pick your engagements with. You don't sit up top and then just sort of go for it from there. That's not the way this plane works. Kind of like the, the J8 might work, where you want to try and sit above your opponents and send long-range missiles down at your opponents. Doesn't really work that way. Of course, the, uh, ma the Magic 2s, they are, you know, decently long-ranged, but you don't want to use them at super long range because then that leaves them liable to being flared. And of course, you can probably see them and you could probably see your Mirage, but you know, with the J8, you are sort of like five kilometers up and firing them from that long a distance. And that's the sort of distance you want to be stealth missiling at. But with here, you kind of have to involve yourself in dogfights. Now, speaking of dogfights, we have a bunch of F-14s. So, you know, Maverick is coming out and uh, the danger zone is well and truly underway. We have plenty of Phoenixes heading out, and the Phoenixes are going to be really annoying because they put you in a defensive situation immediately. Those AIM-54s have that range and have that capability to throw you off just a little bit. And just starting the match off on the wrong foot can be enough for some pilots to sneak an advantage onto you. Now, I've managed to notch these missiles, so they don't go for me, but there is another one that I am a little bit concerned about. You could see it sort of in the distance, and now there are a couple of more, and one of them looks like it's sort of turning around towards me, so I'm going to head away from it. I'm going to notch away from it, and uh, here's another one coming straight towards me. I'm going to get that one missile off and then duck straight underneath. It looks like, thankfully, it is a phoenix, and I managed to get away from it, but my god, there are a lot of missiles around here, and I need to make sure that I don't fall victim to any of the F-14's nasty tricksies. So we're going to go around and looks like the F-14's are going to sort of start having their way with my team. So I need to go and deal with them. But of course, there are other planes that are going to come into the battlefield. The F-104 looks like a fairly easy target. The Magic 2 is going to land pretty solidly on that if I can, you know, get him to not pay attention. And lo and behold, he doesn't. And then I'm going to prime a uh, 530D for this EJ, and the EJ looks like he's not really paying attention, but is it going to strike? It seems like it does. These missiles tend to be, from my experience, a little bit temperamental, but if you can get them to work, it's really good. And now the F5C is coming in, and of course he's only got F, uh, AIM-9Es, and so we just, you know, take a couple of little gentle turns, trying not to bleed too much speed, and the F-14 decides that I am not a great target to engage here. So I'm going to head back towards my uh, friendly here, and it looks like the GR-7 has finally cracked the shits and gone down. Now, I need to make a decision here. I need to figure out who I'm going to engage, who's my priority, and it seems like the plane that's gaining on me is probably going to be the biggest threat. The F-14 has decided that the J-35 is a juicier target, and so this gives me the opportunity to completely focus my attention here on the F-5. And we're going to go straight into the dogfight. I'm going to burn a bit of speed. And hopefully the F-5 decides to pursue. And it looks like he is. So we're going to go around and go above and try and cut him into a vertical here. And it looks like he has just blown straight in front of my guns. I'm going to try and get some nice shots here. And it looks like it rings true. The Diva cannons are good for short range. I consider them to be more of a shotgun of a, of a cannon than like a, a Vulcan might be or perhaps something else that's, you know, very focused where you can take your shots out to a long distance. The Difas are not it. 
These are very much sort of burst fire. Get your volume of fire out in a very short distance and make that target pay with the high rate of fire. So now that we have that, I am going to go for another opponent that I think might not be paying attention, and that's this F-14A who's chasing AI, because of course when you've got two enemies left, you go and chase AI, because I've got no, no goddamn idea. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that if you want to win a match, chasing AI is not going to get you that. And of course, you might ask, well, why would I want to like win a match when I can, you know, just gain some RP? Because if you win the match, you actually gain more RP than if you lose the match. So it doesn't matter if you have those extra two AI, they're pretty much worth nothing. But if you win the match, you'll end up earning more RP towards your modifications or towards future aircraft than if you were to otherwise go for these AI. And in this case here, the F-14, instead of going for me, has compromised the victory of the game by allowing a 2v1 to turn into a 1v1 here. The F-4J is coming in close, and I can see that he's going to come in, and he's going to start using that radar to get me to notch. And as soon as I notch and I notice that missile's tracking, I'm going to take a guess and say that it is some sort of AIM-9, put myself into a vertical to avoid his guns, and so begins the dogfight. If I can beat an F-5C, surely I can beat an F-4J. Now the F4J has quite a lot of energy and he is putting me into the vertical. Uh, I'm just sort of gonna wing it here and see what pans out really because I wasn't really sure of the capabilities of this plane at the time. And it looks like whilst that F14 is finally burnt down, I am absolutely starting to get right behind this F4J. I'm gonna sort of bring him into that downward corkscrew. I should have shut off my afterburner here, but he's he's managing his throttle by the looks of it. And he's must be hammering the air brake and trying to work the flaps but at the end of the day the delta wing on this plane is going to give you that AOA and it's also going to generate plenty of lift at low speeds which is exactly the design of this plane or the intention of this plane. I'm going to try and cut in nice and close there to the ground and then I'm going to maybe turn it into a vertical here to just try and sink into the F4J nice and firm, keeping also that speed nice and low, which gives me that excellent maneuverability. And the F4J falls right in front of my guns, and there goes his wing. This plane is really good at dogfighting. It's so good. It's exactly what I wanted in the French tree. It's not the F1C, which is an absolute fucking turd of a plane. It is not the Mirage 3, which does not have flares. It's actually something that might be good. We can call this, perhaps, a rare French W. We have our final part of the match. I've gone rearmed, repaired, and now I'm looking for the last F-14. And I think I can see him on the radar here. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to take off and have a quick look. I'm going to go for a climb because I think a climb is going to be the best bet here. And of course, Gaijin has really good servers. You can see that latency there and that uh, beautiful rubber banding. We never have any problems in this game at all. So. I'm going to sort of go out and look, and of course that Avenger order has been put onto me, so I am a sitting duck. I basically just have to wait for him to come and absolutely shred me, and then I can spot something on my RWR. I think, I think it was my RWR, there we go. I've just been pinged by the RWR, so I'm going to try and notch that. Uh, but I see this, the spot, or the mark, above me, and he has fired an air-to-air -air missile. It's coming down, it is pretty damn close, so I'm going to cut the afterburner, pop the flares, go for the vertical, just like I did for the F4J, and it looks like he's going to engage in a dogfight, which is perfect, because that's exactly what plays right into my hands. Thank you for the 5,000 free silver lions, says me, and thank you very much to the Roland for shooting him down. That is what happens when you get greedy. But so far, the Mirage 2000 is shaping up to be a pretty good plane. I'm genuinely enjoying it, and I'm genu genuinely enjoying playing top tier again. I had a real issue where top tier was just not fun, and the Mirage 2000C, and I think just the lack of monkeys with their uh, good old AIM-54 Phoenixes, has sort of given it some extra vitality for me. But anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do for today. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.